Welcome back and I appreciate y'all joining me. We're gonna jump in here today. I'm gonna show you how to change the fuel line on a steel FS90R. Chances are, if you're here watching this video, you've already got into it and realized it's a little different than the common trimmer where you just feed a piece of line through the tank. It actually takes a special connector. This is the connector. The fuel filter will hook on this end. This will seat into your tank and then two lines coming up. So there's no way to change this without pulling it out of the tank. So we're gonna replace from the top of the tank to inside of the tank with OEM parts. Then we're gonna come off the top with some bulk fuel line to reconnect to the car. So let's get over and I'll show you how to do that. So the first thing I like to do, we're gonna remove this carburetor, it just makes it easy. So we're gonna remove this breather cover and our engine housing. Breather cover is pretty simple. You just remove this screw. It'll slide off. We'll remove our filter. Our engine housing, we're gonna remove this screw. And then we're gonna come around here and we're gonna remove these two screws. Once you take those screws out, it should just pull off. It may be a little snug. You may have to wiggle it. Next thing we'll do is unhook this throttle cable. If you'll just reach in here, just reach in and pull that down. You'll see your cable slide up, pull it out and release it. Then we'll remove the car by removing these two nuts to remove our breather housing. Now, when you go to pull this off, it's not gonna come all the way off. And the reason why there's a line around here, that's part of your vent system, right here. Don't worry about that. You don't need to unhook that. You should be able to just slide that out of the way. Now, when you go to slide this carb off, you have what is called an impulse line down here. If you'll look where the end of that screwdriver's touching, that's your impulse line. It runs from your carburetor back to your cylinder. So as you take that off, you have to reach in there and gently pull that back off of the carburetor as you slide it out. Sometimes, they come out with no problems. Other times, they fight you the whole way. Now our impulse line is unhooked. Before we can get that carbon off, we have to remove these fuel lines. Remembering which one goes where. They are actually longer so that you can tell. And then your carburetor should just slide off. Now, just for the sake of this video, I am gonna disconnect this and move this breather housing out of the way, but you don't have to do that. I'm more doing that just to make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. So this piece here is what we're gonna take out. This piece here is actually this piece that we're gonna replace it with. Now, if you're going to reuse your lines on the top, I'd suggest at this point you go ahead and pull them off. If you're not, you want to pull them off or keep and keep them or else just leave them on because you'll pull them off at another time. This will help you measure your new piece of line. Sometimes I can just pop that right out by putting something under it. Be careful how much you get in there and go to prying on that tank. You don't want to bust that tank. We'll try it like that first and see if it'll just pop out. To be honest though, most of the time, it does not just pop out, it breaks off like that. So then I'll reach in with a pair of pliers and just gently work it. Make sure that vent is moved out of your way, you don't wanna break that off. Probably a better way to do it, I just wanted to show you there that that would break would be, with that piece still there, gently put pressure and pry up, because you're not gonna reuse this. I guess you could, if you were in a bind, you could reuse it. But if you're gonna do a fuel line repair, why not go ahead and get the right piece? It's only five or six dollars and it's, you don't have to worry about it after that. Let's damp you. There we go. Now, if you look at that line, that line has got cracks all in it. So what we're doing here basically is a preventative maintenance, because it will fail. Those cracks are dry rot, so it will eventually fail. When I put this in, I like to put a little bit of mixing oil on it, 
helps it slide in a little better. And go ahead and put your fuel filter on. Feed that into your tank, set that down, and make sure that that tab lines up with that opening. Sometimes that'll push right in. Other times I have to tap it in. If it don't, take your socket. In this case, I use a shallow 5.8 with an extension that allows you to be able to get by this stud. Lay it on the top of it and gently strike it with your mallet. And that is set home. So what we're gonna do next is make our fuel lines from here up. You can use your old ones as a template of which ones to cut and which ones go where. And just pull them off so you'll have them. And then if you've still got your old piece, you can tell which side that your pickup line is on. So you can make sure and connect that back to your carburetor. Now, in this case, that's gonna be our short line because that's what hooks to this that's gonna go on this nipple for our supply. And then our return line, which is our longer one, We'll go on this one to feed the fuel back into the tank. Now for this external line, I'll be using some Tigon. Particular one we're gonna use on this FS90 is a 1 8 inch inside diameter with a quarter inch outside diameter. And it has a 1 16th wall thickness. We're gonna just take our other two lines, cut them the exact same length. Cause if you get them too long, you'll have some kinking issues. So we're gonna put our short line on first. We're gonna remember it goes on this nipple uh, because that is our supply line. To do that, I like to put a little bit of mixing oil over that nipple. It just helps it slide on easier. Don't get it down in the nipple like I did there. And just slide it all the way down. Then we're gonna do the same thing on our other nipple. And this is our return line. And make sure it seats all the way down. Now at this point, we're ready to reinstall our carburetor. A couple little things here that we have to watch out for. One is this impulse line that I showed you. You have to make sure when you slide that back up on it, that this goes into that. Otherwise it won't draw fuel. You'll think you have a carburetor problem. And you do, but it's because the impulse isn't working. What I do, is as I slide that carburetor up on the unit, I reach down with something here and line up that impulse. Uh, there's no clear way for me to show you here. I just move that impulse line down to where it lines up. I like to go ahead now and line up and hook up my throttle cable. Same as you took it apart, move your throttle lever down and slide that cable through that slit. Let's do that again. You're gonna pull your throttle down, pull your cable into that groove and release your throttle. Now we'll go ahead and rehook our fuel lines. Keep in mind that this long one goes to the top that comes out of your primer bulb. That's what returns your fuel to your tank. And then the shorter one will go on this nipple here. That's your supply, that's what brings it from the tank. So let's go ahead at this point and put a little gas in it and make sure we're getting fuel up through our lines. I'm using my California can here. So the two things that we're looking for here is that fuel comes into our primer bulb and that we see fuel moving through our lines. And as you can see, we are moving fuel through our lines and we do have fuel in our primer bulb. Now we're gonna put the top back on. We're gonna put the breather cover back on and the breather housing. And then we're gonna fire it up and see if it works. Now, when you put this breather housing back on, if you disconnected that vent line, you need to make sure and reconnect that to your vent. and then simply slide it back up into place and put your two nuts on. Now we're gonna put our housing back on, same as when you took it off before. You may have to wiggle it, put a little pressure, but it should 
pretty much slide into place. You shouldn't have to beat on with your frame on it. So the last thing we're gonna do before we try to crank it is replace this air filter. We're not gonna put the old one back in. You can see the difference between the two. So we're gonna install a new one and then replace our air filter housing and we'll be ready to see if it'll run. So let's see if it'll fire up. Now, as I may have mentioned in the video, the customer had told me this unit run fine. It was actually just brought in for a service and that was one of the things that we found. Uh, the people who own this machine, the couple that owns this machine, I actually know them from when I used to run Hicks Feed and Garden Center years ago. They were customers there and now they're customers at my new shop. Uh, this unit is usually used by the wife. This is her equipment. I guess it's their equipment. You married people, you know how that works. So uh, it's her equipment. And she likes to have some preventative maintenance done. And now apparently that's probably because in the past she's went to use her equipment at some point or another, or maybe the husband, and it didn't run. So now they can't do what they want. So preventative maintenance, I've got a video on that coming. So, or it may already be on there by the time you see this one. Just something to keep in mind. That job with the right tools and the right parts should take you with hand tools about 25 to 35 minutes, depending on your skill level. So I appreciate y'all joining me. I hope you learned something here. Maybe that's a way you could tackle that. I'll see you next time.